Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level As I started to write the review for Pupil Wondering, I noticed something. My hands were still shaking. When I write a review, I tend to do it immediately after the playthrough experience, so as not to forget anything. Emotions run especially high on that list. Sometimes you'll come back to a review after a day or two has passed, and unless you captured it right away, you might have forgotten a particular moment, mechanic, or as previously mentioned, emotion. Let me just say this to start. Pupil Wandering is a janky game. I mean all kinds of janky. Currently only available on the Hong Kong store, it clocks in at roughly the equivalent of $13 American, so I kind of knew it wasn't going to be a masterpiece. The movement is slow as molasses and stilted. Your arms apparently have no elbows, and your lantern does whatever the fuck it feels like whenever the fuck it feels like doing it. But by God is this game terrifying. It kind of caught me off guard. Here I was having a hell of a time trying to get the movement down, swinging my lamp around in the tutorial wondering why I once again decided to splash out on foreign VR madness when the game started proper. Instantly, and I mean instantly, I was struck with fear. Queen Ru planned to hold a mysterious ceremony for me. Maybe I was wrong. But I saw you standing, looking at me, in the ceremony. Let me explain something to you lovely people out there in internet land. I don't get scared. Hardly ever. Horror is kind of my thing. I completed Resident Evil 7 in two sittings and a DLCs in one each. I had zero problems with paranormal activity, don't knock twice, until dawn rush of blood, the inpatient, the rabbit hole, basically every horror game that has hit VR so far, I have had zero problems with. Except this one. Let me preface this with a little history before you go running out to play Asia to buy your Hong Kong PSN cards though. There is only two game series in the history of games that have ever seriously given me chills. The first was the Silent Hill series, and while scary, I was still able to complete those with no issues. The second, I could not finish. And that was Fatal Frame. If you've never heard of it, basically it was an Asian horror game where you were stuck in a haunted house with a camera that could take pictures of ghosts. You had to let them come close to you and then take the photo. The closer and scarier the scenario, the better defense your camera would give you. This game hit me in a way that none before it had, and I don't know if it's just a particular quirk or fear that I have of this situation, or whether the game truly was that terrifying. The sequel is officially the scariest game ever made in my mind. So why do I bring this up? Swap a camera for a hanging lantern? This game is essentially Fatal Frame VR. You heard me right. Fatal Frame VR. You play as a young Japanese girl in a haunted house with nothing but a lantern as your defense. The lantern will flash only two colors outside of its standard white. Purple, for an interesting area, or red, for oh fuck a ghost is about to attack you from out of the ether. This game is filled with Asian movie and game horror tropes. Long hair everywhere, collecting puzzle emblems to open doors, startling ghost attacks from seemingly nowhere, creepy Japanese schoolgirl laughter, to name but a few. As you make your way around the house, you're basically solving many Resident Evil-esque puzzles whilst also being occasionally bombarded by pure terror.
The sound effects are entirely too loud in headphones and equally shocking because of it. Some puzzles might require some sincere guesswork, despite the game being in English, but I managed to make it to the end in a single playthrough, although I'm fairly certain I missed out on a few secrets along the way. It appears as though this is the first chapter of a potential series. Therefore, the game is unfortunately short. I would liken it to the length of a DLC for Resident Evil 7, around an hour and a half to two hours. For the asking price, this is entirely reasonable though. With all of its shortcomings, I still would put this down as one of my current favourite experiences in VR, simply due to the way that it made me feel. As I mentioned early in the review, emotion plays high on my list of reasons for enjoying a game. I can see through a lot of bullshit if a game hits me a certain way, and when I think back to this game, I remember being stuck in a corner, my back against the wall, wildly swinging my lantern around waiting for a hint of red so I knew where to focus all of my courage and strength for the incoming threat that would be unseen until moments before it struck. I remember how many times I jumped out of my goddamn skin when creepy Japanese girl ghosts would seemingly appear from nowhere crying or screaming or calling me on the phone. I remember my heart pounding as I went to exit a room I had recently entered only to discover that the door was locked and I probably wasn't alone anymore. I remember the fear, the adrenaline rush, the terror, and all of the other stuff kind of washes away. I got used to the controls, I got used to the slightly blurrier than usual graphics, I got used to not knowing what the ever-loving fuck was going on most of the time, and I just tried to make it to the end. And when the words to be continued flashed up at me at the end of the chapter, I had two thoughts. Number one, there's no way I'm going to play a sequel to this game. Number two, but I really want to. Let me end by saying that pupil wandering may not be for everyone. If you're picky about your VR titles, comfort settings, controls, graphics, etc., you're going to be bummed out by this game. For those of you who have wanted an Asian horror VR title that will scare the pants off you, it looks like you found it though. Thanks for watching.